Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to knit the head and tail of a tiger. The techniques and stitches you'll need for this animal are stockinette, basic increases and decreases, mattress stitch for the seams, and duplicate stitch or Swiss darning for the stripes and ear patches. If you choose the body with the different colored belly like this one, you'll also use intarsia. You'll need about three ounces of DK or sport weight yarn or about three to four times that if you're using a bulky weight yarn. I've chosen to give my tiger a white belly and then there's white on the nose and ears. So about a fifth of my yarn should be white and then I'll need even less than that of the dark on the ears, nose, and stripes. You'll also need about a yard of dark yarn for the eyes. Use knitting needles that are at least two sizes smaller than what's recommended for the yarn you're using. The orange and white yarn I wanted to use for this tiger was too fine, so I'm holding two strands together and using size four needles. Some other things you'll need are stuffing, scissors, a tapestry needle, and some type of row counter so that you can keep track of which row you're on. With each of my animals, I like to include a list of that animal's attributes. Tiger's attributes are active, unique, independent, protective, loud, rare, courageous, ambitious, and confident. This video focuses only on the head and tail. All my animals use the same body and leg patterns, so I have separate videos for them. If you haven't knitted them yet, you can find links to those patterns in the description. Remember that if you want a tiger with a white belly, you need to follow the video for the different colored stomach. And if you want your tiger to have a different colored hands and feet, be sure to watch the part of the arms and legs video that shows how to do that. Okay, let's get started with the head. Cast on seven stitches in black for the nose. The yarn that I'm using today is quite thin, so I'm holding more than one strand together as I knit. This is a great way to use yarns that I find on sale, and it's also a great way to get unique color combinations. On row one, change to the white yarn and then just purl across. On row two, knit one, then begin the pattern of knitting one and increasing one. I like to increase with what's often called a make one by knitting into the stitch below the one on the right needle. Knit one and increase one across to the last stitch and then knit it. When you're done, you should have 12 stitches. Curl across on row three. On row four, knit the first stitch. Then knit one and make one four times. Then knit two. Then make one and knit one four times. And then knit the last stitch. And you should have 20 stitches.
Continue in stockinette on these 20 stitches for rows 5, 6, and 7. On row 8, change to the main orange color and then continue in stockinette for rows 8 and 9. On row 10, knit 7, then make 1, then increase 1, then knit 2 and make 1 3 times, then knit 7 stitches. And you should have 24 stitches. Purl across on row 11. On row 12. Knit the first seven stitches and then increase one. Then knit two and make one five times. And then knit seven stitches. And you should have 30 stitches. Curl across on row 13. On row 14, knit the first 8 stitches, then increase 1, then knit 2 and increase 1 7 times, and then knit the last 8 stitches, and then you should have 38 stitches.
Purl across on row 15. On row 16, knit the first seven, then increase one, then knit six and increase one, then knit 11 and increase one, then knit six and increase one, and then knit the final eight stitches, and you should have 42. Continue in stockinette for rows 17 through 21, and then meet me back here when you're ready to begin row 22. On row 22, knit 6, and then increase 1. Do that across to the last 6 stitches, and then just knit them. And you should have 48 stitches at the end of this row. Continue in stockinette for rows 23 and 24. On row 25, we start decreasing at the back of the head. Purl the first three and then purl two together. Then the pattern is purl six and purl two together. Do that pattern to the last three stitches and then just purl them. And when you're done, you should have 42 stitches. Knit across on row 26. On row 27, Purl the first two and then purl two together. Then the pattern is purl five and purl two together. Do that pattern to the last three stitches and then purl them. When you're done, you should have 36.
knit across on row 28, On row 29, purl the first two, then the pattern is purl two together and then purl one. Do that pattern across to the last stitch and then purl it, and you should have 25 stitches. Knit across on row 30. On row 31, purl the first stitch and then purl two together. Do that across to the last two and then purl them individually and you should have 14 stitches when you're done. Knit across on row 32. Row 33 is the last row. Purl the first stitch and then purl two together across to the last stitch and then purl it individually and you should have eight stitches when you're done. Now don't cast off here. Instead, cut your yarn, leaving enough to sew the seam and to attach the head to the body later. Thread this tail onto a tapestry needle and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the needle. Just to be safe, I like to thread the tail through those same stitches once more. Pull it tight to make a nice closure. Now so the bottom head seam a little less than halfway from the back to the neck at the bottom of the head.
Next, take the tail that you left at your cast on edge. Weave this through the cast on stitches. And then sew up the head seam, again leaving a wide enough opening at the bottom where you can stuff the head. And that finishes up the main headpiece. We'll add details like the stripes later. Now let's knit the ears. We're going to make two ears in a dark color. I'm using a dark brown. Tigers have a white spot on the back of each ear. We'll add that with duplicate stitch after we finish knitting the ears. Whenever I need to knit two of the same item, I like to knit them both at the same time to make sure that they look consistent. But just for simplicity's sake, I'll only knit one for this video. So start by casting on eight in the darker color. Remember to leave a good tail for sewing with later. Purl across on row one. On row 2, knit 1, then knit 1 and increase 1 across to the last stitch, and then knit it. You should have 14 stitches now. Purl across on row 3. On row 4, knit 2 and increase 1. Do that across to the last 2 stitches, and then you should have 20 stitches. On rows 5 through 8, work in stockinette without any increases or decreases. And I'll meet you back here when you're ready for row 9. On row 9, we begin decreasing. Purl the first stitch and then follow the pattern of purling one and then purling two together. Do that across to the last stitch and then purl it and this will give you 14 stitches.
knit across on row 10, On row 11, purl the first stitch and then purl two together, do that six times. Then purl the last stitch and you should have eight stitches on your needle. Cut the yarn leaving a long enough tail for sewing with later and pull the yarn through these last stitches. Then fold the ear in half and use mattress stitch to sew the side seam of the ear. When we're ready to assemble the head, we'll sew the ears to the head using these leftover tails. The optional white spots and most of the stripes are added using duplicate stitch or Swiss darning. Duplicate stitch or Swiss darning is a quick and easy way to add colors by embroidering over the tops of the Vs. And here's how you can do that. Thread your needle with the new color. Poke your needle from the back to the front at the bottom of the first V you want to cover. Next, pass your needle under and through both legs of the V above the V you're trying to cover. Pull it through snugly, being careful not to pull too tightly, and that should cover one leg of the V. Now poke your needle back down through the bottom of the V, where you started, and pull snugly again, and that's it. Now you've duplicated the stitch or you've sewn one V of a different color over the top of the original colors. As you feel more confident, you can go faster by poking your needle up through the bottom of the next V immediately after you've poked down through the bottom of the previous V. For the stripes on the body and legs, I like to make horizontal stripes around the body and legs that aren't perfectly straight or evenly spaced. But if you don't like that, you can make yours evenly spaced and straight across. And I don't add stripes to the stomach area, especially if it's a different color.
If you want your stripes to be continuous around the body and legs, you should sew the seams before adding the duplicate stitch. However, tiger stripes do have jogs at the back, and you'll get a more obvious set of jogs at the back if you add the duplicate stitch prior to sewing the seam. Remember that the body and leg patterns are in separate videos and there's a link in the description for them. For the spots on the backs of the ears, add two to three duplicate stitches at the bottom, followed by four to five stitches on the next row or two, and then end at the top with just two or three stitches again. When working with dark colors, especially when they're fuzzy like this, sometimes it can be hard to see the Vs. It won't matter if you go a little too high or low on some Vs. Animal markings are almost never perfectly straight or round. I like the stripes on the face of the tiger to be thinner than what you'll get with duplicate stitch, so I like to embroider lines on the face. A simple back stitch works great, but I like the added texture that comes with the stem stitch, and here's how you do that. Pull the needle up from the back at the starting point. Push the needle in from the front a few stitches away. Then pull the needle up from the back in the middle of the stitch you just made and slightly above the stitch. Then push the needle in from front to back a few stitches away, but even with the end of the previous stitch. Come back up from the back to the front, slightly above and in the middle of the previous stitch. And continue repeating this to the end. Every tiger stripes are unique, but I like to make one stripe from the center of the tiger's forehead to the back, and then add another three to five stripes on each side of the face, starting in the cheek or forehead area and going back to the middle of the back of the head. Just as with the stitches on the body and legs, I like the stripes not to be perfectly straight or uniform. I think it looks more natural that way. And now we're ready for the tail. For the tiger's tail, I like to use a two-color cast-on that gives a sort of striped effect. Holding both colors together, make a slip knot and put this on the needle.
Cast on 20 stitches as you would for a long tail cast on, but use one of the colors as the working yarn and the other color as the long tail. After casting on 20 stitches, combine both strands of the yarn and knit with both of them together, binding off as you go. Having double the number of strands on this row causes the tail to naturally curl up. At the end, cut your yarn and pull both strands through the remaining loop, leaving just enough yarn so that you can sew the tail onto the back later. You'll sew the tail into position on the back near the widest part of the body, and you'll do that before you add the legs. Now let's assemble the head. By the way, I also have a separate video for assembling my animals. So in this video, I'm focusing only on the head. You can find all the videos for the arms, legs, body, and assembly in the playlist on my channel. Grab some scissors, a tapestry needle, some stuffing, and yarn for the eyes and stripes. Stuff the stuffing through the little hole you left at the bottom of the head, and be careful not to add so much that it makes the stitches spread apart. Use a French knot for the eyes like this. Pull the yarn out at the position where you want the eye. Then stick your needle back in through the same place and come back out one stitch away. Don't pull the yarn all the way through but leave a little loop that you can stick your needle into. Pull the loop snug but not too tight against the needle and then while holding it in place Wrap the yarn five to six times around the needle. Then hold the loop and wraps carefully with one hand as you pull the needle and yarn through them, creating a little circle of loops. To secure the little circle of loops into position, I like to add a couple more loops by stitching close near the bottom of the eye on the head and then coming back out through the center of the loops. I like to do this a few times until the eye feels secure on all sides. Follow these same steps to add the second eye. So the ears to the left and right sides of the top of the head, about 10 to 11 stitches apart. I like to embroider the face stripes after all the pieces are sewn onto the face and head. So 
Sew the head onto the neck of the body. And here's how the tiger looks when it's all done. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new animal and clothing patterns. And if you'd like, please share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.